Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to dive straight into another root tutorial, this time for the Woodland Alliance. Alright, so we're going to watch the cat set up again. The upstart Woodland Alliance wished to unite the creatures of the forest and revolt against their oppressors. They score points by spreading sympathy for their cause across the woodland. Being the underdogs, we won't start with any warriors or buildings on the map. Instead, we're going to begin with three supporters that can spread sympathy tokens for our cause. So, the Woodland Alliance are quite unlike the Eerie and the Marquise in that you do not have a large warrior count as you can see. We only have 10 warriors and they don't even start on the board. So they're more of an insurgent faction than a military faction. Let's go ahead and take a look at how they play. Each clearing where we can spread sympathy has a supporter cost. You can see that when you're in the sympathy spreading phase, the cost will be shown for you. So we can spend a supporter to spread sympathy in the fox clearing here. So right here represents our supporters. We have one icon for each supporter we have of each suit. Uh, we can have bird supporters as well, but we don't have any. And each supporter is actually a card that gets added to supporters. So we can go ahead and spread our sympathy, first starting sympathy in this fox clearing here. And we can spread sympathy multiple times in one turn if we have the supporters, we just have to expand from this fox clearing. So then we can go ahead and spread from that clearing to this rabbit clearing at the cost of one rabbit supporter. Now it's going to score us a point. We can take a, a look at our sympathy track here. So the more sympathy we place, the more supporters it's going to cost, all the way up to three supporters. And we're also going to be rewarded with more points for having more sympathy out on the map. Now you'll notice that sympathy doesn't go in a building slot. So sympathy is not a building, it's a token. And tokens don't count towards your rule, but they still can be destroyed in battle. They get destroyed after warriors, and they still reward a point to whoever destroys them. So at the start of daylight, Sympathy will contribute the suit of its clearing towards paying crafting costs, like roosts and workshops. So we can go ahead and craft this crossbow because we have one fox Sympathy, and it costs one fox crafting. That'll give us a point, and the crossbow for the Vagabond. We'll be covering the Vagabond in our next video. And then we can go ahead and use Mobilize to convert the rest of our cards that we don't want to use on this turn, or that we don't feel are very useful as cards, into supporters. Cats are going to go ahead and take a turn. another sawmill back at their keep and take a recruit action and a march all right so it's time to revolt so before spreading sympathy we have the opportunity to look for a revolt and in order to revolt we have to have a clearing that's already sympathetic to our cause and have two supporters matching that clearing uh, suit and that would obviously include birds because birds are wild so since we have our two fox supporters and a sympathy already in this clearing we can go ahead and revolt at the start of our turn first at, uh, part of our bird song and what that's going to do is remove all enemy warriors buildings and tokens in the clearing giving us points for the buildings and tokens removed and we're going to get a base so a, what a base does is it first of all increases our card draw and Second of all, we are able to recruit warriors at the base now. And we start with one warrior because when we build a base, we gain warriors at the base equal to the number of sympathetic clearings of the same suit. So since we only have one sympathetic fox clearing, we gain one fox warrior there. 
and there are only three bases and we can only have one of each type so our fox base has now been placed so we have the mouse and rabbit bases remaining and we've also gained an officer the officer comes out of our warrior supply just like our warriors do so you'll see that even though we only have one warrior on the board we've decreased down to eight from ten because one was added to officers and officers are going to help us take actions during evening now we can go ahead and spread more sympathy it'll be nice to uh, get some sympathy in a central clearing where it has access to many clearings to spread from there and we have the choice of whether to craft or mobilize this. I'm going to go ahead and mobilize it just because it's only worth one point for crafting and could use a supporter. All right, so now in evening we get to take military operations and we get one action per officer. Since we have one officer right now, we can take one action. We're going to go ahead and recruit at our base. Marquis are going to come in and try to fight us, it looks like. Okay, so here's the cool thing about the Alliance, right? They use cards to spread sympathy and revolt uh, from their supporter stack. And once a clearing is established as sympathetic, if an opponent uh, moves warriors into a sympathetic clearing, they have to give you a card matching the clearing suit that you can then add to your supporters. And the same goes for if they destroy it. So if they walk into the clearing and destroy it on the same turn, you're gonna be gaining two uh, supporters from it. So it's not that bad of a trade even if you do lose your sympathy token. So the Woodland Alliance are masters of guerrilla war as well. So when the Woodland Alliance defends in battle, they take the higher die as if they were the attacker. So that is a nice tool to dissuade them from, uh, to dissuade people from attacking them. To take advantage of their low warrior count, this helps them uh, defend better. And you might be thinking, well, if it's if it's hard to attack the alliance and they get stuff back from spreading sympathy, doesn't that make them really good? What what do you do to stop them? Well, let's cover that in a sec. We're gonna try and score 15 points to complete the scenario. So. It's not listed on the faction board here, but the Alliance does have a drawback to spreading their sympathy called martial law. So what that entails is whenever a clearing that you want to spread sympathy to has three or more warriors of the same faction in it, it then costs you one extra supporter to spread sympathy there. So because that faction is so firmly entrenched in the clearing, it's harder for your uh, supporters to whip those uh, uh, clearing dwellers into a frenzy and join your cause. So that's uh, one, one thing you can do is around these clearings say, these clearings that I could spread to, if other factions recruited several warriors and moved them into these clearings, it would then be harder for me to spread because of martial law. Okay, so we've got nowhere to revolt. We're going to go ahead and continue on to spreading sympathy, but because we only have one of each supporter there and it costs us now two sympathy to spread, we can't spread either, so we're going to go straight into daylight. Okay, and now we get to see our final uh, possible daylight action, which is training. That allows us to spend a card matching the suit of the clearing where we have a base in order to add another officer to our officers. So the bird card is nice to have. Let's go ahead and train with the fox card since we have it. And right there noting that, just like we said earlier, the officers and warriors come from the same supply. So it's important to manage that number and be aware of when you're running out. All right, and then we can go ahead and uh, mobilize this uh, bird here to a supporter. And now in our evening, we are going to prepare to organize some sympathy next turn. So the Alliance is for evening actions that they can take. Our move, 
recruit and battle those three are self-explanatory and then we have organize and what organize lets you do is if you have a warrior in a non-sympathetic clearing you can remove that warrior from the board in order to turn it into a sympathy token so that is an effective strategy for getting around martial law uh, if you are having a hard time getting the cards to spread well then hopefully you have a warrior on the board that you can move into that clearing and then organize it so next turn we're going to look to train another officer so we have a third action and so that way we can start uh, really getting these warriors into clearings and organizing them but it should be noted that we can't organize in the clearing with the keep because at the keep only the marquise can place pieces so if i were to organize there i would remove the warrior but i wouldn't be able to place the sympathy token so I would lose a warrior and gain no benefit from that action. Marquis are gonna go ahead and establish a workshop. And, oh, two workshops, okay. All right, so we have the opportunity to revolt. I don't, think that revolting is all that useful. Now, if we were playing to 30 points, 100% revolting is useful. Getting a second base uh, gets you access to three card draws a turn and allows you to organize from multiple places. Here though, I want to save the supporters just for spreading because it doesn't it's not really worth it uh, in my opinion to get um, another base just for this tutorial since we're only playing to 15. So let's go ahead and spread sympathy using our supporters. And then for our action, we can go ahead and train this guy. Train with this guy. So now I've got three officers. And then we can go ahead and we've actually um, got the ability to craft this cobbler card, which allows us to take a move at the start of the evening. This is an excellent card for the Marquise to craft, by the way. The Marquise really want to, uh, they want to move as little as possible because they only get three actions, but if they get this card, which allows them a free move, absolutely they will take that. It allows them to improve their position and uh, support the clearings that they need to support. So if you are playing the Marquise, I know this video is about the Alliance, and you're wondering where should I build my workshops, I would say a, a bunny clearing is a, is a good spot to put your initial workshop and then you will need to put down one more bunny clearing to have the ability to craft cobbler and command warren which is another uh, persistent effect that costs two rabbit crafting and they're both very strong for the Marquise. Uh, for the alliance at the start of evening taking a move, not as effective in my opinion because we already have move as part of our military operations, but does the rabbit supporter help us that much more? Not really, so let's go ahead and just craft it. It'll save us from, and we can use our military operations for something else. Let me, let me amend my statement. I, I'm going to say that card is still good for the Alliance, it's just much better for the Marquise. So let's go ahead and activate our crafted card here on the side and we can move. Let's go ahead and move into this clearing since it is defenseless. So we only need to move one warrior in here and then we can battle away these uh, workshops. Yep, so they're telling us about organize. We don't want to organize here though since there are two free buildings for us to target. We can go ahead and attack these. As long as we roll a one, the defenseless bonus will allow us to take out both. Yep, so there we go. Remember that the uh, defenseless bonus doesn't cap in the same way that warriors limit your hits it will add one so one warrior can deal two hits with the defenseless bonus all right and now we've got two more actions so let's go ahead and take a move into this clearing let's actually move mm, now moving two is not great because as much as I would like to move two and then move one more into this, I oh know that, never mind, that clearing's already sympathetic. I meant this clearing. Um, then it would only leave us with one warrior protecting the base. 
which is not great because even with guerrilla warfare the marquise could still be able to break through and uh, destroy it, at least our sympathy if not the base as well so let's go ahead and organize one of our warriors there another sympathy and two points and that'll complete the turn so if we didn't craft cobbler there we wouldn't have had the actions to get that organized um, and still be set up to organize in another clearing. Yep, so they're gonna attack our defense with sympathy. It's completely fine. We're just gonna place it again Get the get those points back and we'll get a supporter as well because they destroyed it It's gonna be a bunny supporter Yep. And they're gonna go ahead and recruit and they're gonna use Hawks for hire to take another action and battle our sympathy again. Also okay with that. Feed me the supporters. Looks like we're in another rabbit clearing, so yep. So that will give us the two rabbit supporters. We need to continue to spread sympathy there. And we actually are able to take a look at the Marquise's hand because if they're unable to give us a card they have to show us our their hand and we draw from the deck which is what just happened because remember the card has to match the clearing all right so we've got nowhere to revolt because that sympathy was destroyed and now the sympathy is okay interesting why is it saying that this one costs one and that one costs two I think that is not supposed to be like that so let's go ahead and not do that one and just spread two uh, using our two supporters there and then we have our daylight actions and we're only needing five more points unfortunately two sympathy won't quite get us there we could do is train another officer and try and get another point through battling during evening oh never mind what am i saying we can just craft this for a point yeah since we just made a uh, rabbit sympathy one of the great things about the alliance is you can uh, create crafting pieces in the same turn that you use them. So for a lot of factions their crafting part of their turn is before the turn in uh, the part of their turn where they can uh, place the pieces that allow them to craft, right? So the Marquise crafts and then they're able to build their workshops. The Eerie crafts and then they're able to build their roosts. But the Alliance spread their sympathy and then they're able to craft with it in the same turn. So that makes the Alliance very powerful crafters. And you're going to want to uh, craft uh, a fair amount when you're using the alliance. So let's go ahead and move one of our warriors into this clearing. Using our cobbler. And now we've got four actions that we actually aren't going to need all of them. Because these two organizers are going to get us to the 15 points we need. Let me just double check. Yep. So... Were we to continue playing, I would probably just recruit twice at this base to bulk up our defenses. And then using our remaining two actions, we will organize in this rabbit clearing and this mouse clearing. All right, so I hope this tutorial playthrough was helpful for you and you have a decent grasp of how the Alliance works. Uh, this wasn't a full-fledged strategy guide. If you guys would be interested in watching that, definitely let me know in the comments and I will, uh, I would be happy to make that. In the next video, we are going to cover the Vagabond, so I will see you guys then.